Thanks for joining me for Rapid API Development with Sales. I'm Justin James. As the slide says, I'm a DevOps evangelist and a Microsoft MVP. You can follow me on Twitter at DigitalDrummerJ. Feel free to take some pictures, tweet them out. So first and foremost, what are we paid to do? We're paid to deliver value to users as quickly as possible. What are we not paid to do? Write infrastructure code. That code that says, how do I store my routes? How do I wire them up? How do I get data out of the database? None of us are paid to do those pieces. Sales makes it so we don't have to do those pieces. It allows us to create JavaScript-based services on Node, and it will auto-generate our REST APIs. So the minute we get a REST API generated, I can run all of our standard REST verbs, our post, put, deletes, it's gets. It also wires it up to a file-based database so I can store data. I immediately do proof of concepts. The longest part about getting started with sales is waiting for NPM to install some dependencies. After that, 30 seconds later, you've got your API, you're doing testing, you're wiring up your UIs. When you're ready, you can convert over to pretty much any database. They've got over 30 different database connectors that you can install. All the common databases that you would expect. SQL Server, MySQL, Postgres, Mongo, Redis, Couchbase, the list goes on and on. And you don't have to change any code in order to wire that up. You just have to go in a config file and say, how do I connect to the database and what type is it? It's also very flexible and configurable. They do follow a convention over configuration approach, but if you need to drop into the configs, you can do that. You can overwrite any of their configurations. They've got security built in as well. Literally create a JavaScript file in a policies folder, and the function's going to return back, true or false, can I access the resource or not, and you can chain them together. So I can do it, something like, am I logged into the system? And if I'm trying to access some, something that goes to an admin, I can then run a second policy say, are you an admin or not? Very simple to create those policies. It's also built on top of Express. Express has a long history People know what it does. They know the performance of it. You can technically drop it down into Full Express if you wanted to, and you, I've never done it. I've been doing sales for almost two years now. Not once have I actually dropped down and said, let me use Express directly. But it's there if you need it. And I'm glad they didn't build their own underlying infrastructure. Use what's already been proven. Sales is also ridiculously fast to do our development work. As I mentioned earlier, 30 seconds after you get your dependencies, so you can be up and running, doing all of your testing, storing data, it all works super fast. And it just works. I can't count the number of frameworks over the years that I've tried to use, and you spend days trying to do configurations and all this other pomp and circumstance just to get to the first call Sales doesn't have any of that. Their project out of the box just works with good defaults, and then you can modify them to your heart's content. And it doesn't hide the magic. So many times we talk about frameworks like this, and everything's hidden behind the scenes. You might get a conf one config file that allows you to update a few things. Sales is different. They have a whole config directory. Everything is in there for configurations. Your databases, how you wanted models to validate your schema. Do you want it to do migrations of your schemas? Do you want cores? Do you want CSRF? If, and the list goes on and on. Policies, routes, everything's in the config directory. It doesn't hide any of that. It's also open source, which in turn means it's free. So if you wanted to dig under the covers and see how is sales doing stuff behind the scenes, not just the stuff they expose? You could dig in if you wanted to. Not once if I had that need where I went, this thing's not working the way I want, let me dig in. Not once, it just works. Ultimately, 
if we write a little bit amount of code, you get a ton of functionality out of sales. Because ultimately, we are going to write our own business logic, and we'll see that in some slides here of how we can go from the default implementation that doesn't have any of our own custom logic to writing our own custom logic with a few lines of code. Before we get there, you need to know how you get started with this whole thing. First and foremost, you need to install Node. And we have one install to do with NPM. We need to globally install sales so we can get their command line. So npm install dash g sales. Creating a new project. Sales new, give it a project name. And we have two parameters, dash dash no dash linker and dash dash no dash front end. By default, sales includes an EJS templating engine for a UI. I'm not using sales for my UI at all. I'm strictly using it for the API. So those two parameters strip out the whole UI piece, strip out all the grunt tasks that come with it. So I get just a pure API. Then to generate my API, once I have the project generated, go in the project directory, run sales, generate API, and give it a name, like users, to do, customers, orders, or generate me a model and a controller, and now I'm ready to do my, all my testing. For development, they include a development server. Just like we've seen ng-serve, they have sales lift. Same kind of concept. It will run through all of our models. It'll validate our data store has the right configuration. We can tell it to actually do the altering of our data store, so we'll keep the two in sync. And then to actually run it in production, we want to call node app.js. App.js is included with the actual project that gets generated and has everything in there to start sales up the same way that sales lift actually works, but in a production environment. Inevitably, we're going to need to debug. There's two ways. First way, you can use node directly, say node dash dash inspect app.js. It'll start up a Chrome debug window, do all your breakpoints just like we're used to doing. My preferred way, though, is number two. I use Visual Studio Code for my editor. It has a built-in debugger so that I don't have to drop down to the command line. Enough on the overview of sales. Let's look at some code. When we run the sales API generator, we get our controller. It'll be in the API slash controllers slash whatever we named our API. So if I named it user, I'd get a user controller. And it's blank, just like we see on the screen here. We also get a model in the API models folder with the name of our API, so user.js. And we have an attributes section here. That's ultimately where you can describe your data store and all the different fields. But out of the box, both of those give us the ability to now make calls like we see on the screen. Sales lift runs at localhost 1337. I say slash whatever my API is. So if it's users, I would post to users, pass in the JSON file, Git will get me all the data, put allows me to update it if I pass in an ID, and then delete allows me to remove the record with an ID. So even though I don't have any code written yet for my actual API, I can do all of these functions and do all of my testing. Let's take a look at an example here. So for post, because it's using that JSON file that I mentioned earlier, whatever I pass into it is what it's going to store. There is no schema de defined. So here I'm going to pass email, last name, and first name. And the response I'll get back is those three fields, and I get the last three fields automatically added. So I get a created at and an updated at, and then I get an auto-incrementing ID value, which is our primary key in this case. And now if I do a get, since I have some data, it'll return me an array of data back. So by default, get pulls all of the records that match your query. Same data, just in an array. So that's great that it'll do that, but what happens when we need to find business logic? Well, we can build out our model. That attributes I mentioned earlier, 
we can build those three fields out. So for email and last name, first name, I can say I want them to be required, and I want them to be type of string. So automatically sales would do some validation there for me to make sure I passed it in as part of my JSON, and that it was of a type of string. Email has a third parameter called unique. The awesome part about unique is it doesn't run it within sales. It runs it on the data store side, which is very important for performance. Imagine you had a million records and it wanted to make sure your email was unique. You don't want to pull a million records onto your client just to do it. It uses whatever the database uses or data store uses to figure out uniqueness. And the other thing I can model out is my actual relationships between models. So in this case, I'm doing a one-to-many. I'm saying for my user, they're going to have many to-do items, and it's going to be of type to-do, which in my models, I would have a to-do JS API, and I would put the inverse in there to say, this to-do item belongs to a single user. So immediately when I do all my data polls, I'm going to get those relationships back. It's going to auto-populate from the user. It'll populate the to-dos. From the to-do item, it'll populate all of my user values, not just ID values. So that's out-of-the-box functionality. Up to this point, we haven't done anything more than set our model. But what happens when you want to write actual business logic? You can do it with the convention over configuration approach. If I create methods, like what's on the screen here, I can overwrite the built-in rest verbs. So for find and find one, it'll overwrite get. Create is for post, update's a put, and delete's a delete. All of them take in two parameters, a request object and a response object. So let's drill into actually creating one of these things. So we're going to do a find one. It's going to be a single, find me a single user by ID. So we saw in the previous slide, we got our definition here. And now we get into actually doing some data queries. Sales includes an ORM called Waterline. So that's where I get my model name, in this case, user. I say dot find one. It will do a top one based off of whatever I tell it to do, which in this case, I'm pulling by ID. So that's what the brackets at the back part of the find one is. It says find me by ID, and my ID is going to be populated by my request parameters. The one thing that goes away when you start doing your own custom logic like this, it doesn't auto-populate your relationships any longer. But luckily enough, they have a populate command. So I say populate, I give it what I called that relationship, which in this case was to-do items. So now I'll still get my to-dos when I pull back my user. And then I get back a callback. It also works with promises. In this case, I'm only showing callbacks. I get two parameters, errors and my return data, which I called user. I can go through and do some validation. If there's an error, I can return back a server error. So they already have some pre-canned responses. The server error is going to return a status code of 500. If it finds that my node underscore env environment variable is not production, it will return back the error message. If it's production, it will not return back your error message. This way, you don't accidentally leak error messages down to your users. And then if I don't find any data, I can return back the pre-canned 404 not found. If I got all my data, now I can use the pre-canned response.ok. It'll give me a status code 200 and return back a JSON representation of my user. And our response will look something like this. We get our to-do items. So in this case, I don't have any. And we get all the other fields that we saw earlier coming back. So up to this point, we haven't had anything to do with security. Everything's been wide open. But I mentioned earlier there was security that you could build into it. This is an example of an actual security policy, checking to see if I'm logged in. So in the API policies folder, I create this file called is logged in. It starts with our module exports. And I have three parameters, request, response, and next. Next is how you do the chaining together. And then I do my check. In this case, I have a request session in memory object. Somewhere I would have set a user value. It could be the ID value. It could be the whole JSON. Typically, I will make it the ID value, because normally users have some kind of a password or something built in, and you don't want 
One, you don't want to return to the users. Two, you don't even want to store it in memory just in case. So I'll set it to an ID or something. But as long as it's there, I say return next. And you'll notice I don't tell it what to run next. We'll see on the next screen here, or screen or so, how to actually do the configuration. And it will return back whatever next one I've configured it to do. And then if I don't have my user logged in, it will go ahead and return me back a forbidden error, like the 409, and I will give it a message. So wiring up, wiring up's actually really easy. By creating it in the API policies folder, it immediately makes it available, and it's called by whatever name I name the file. It is logged in. So the policies file has a module exports policy. Then I define by controller, what do I want my policies? And then what do I want each method to do? So in this case, for created and logged in, I would have another policy called is logged out. Then everything else, I wanted to run through the is logged in. And you'll notice all of the policies are in array. This is where I would just put a comma, put another policy in there if I needed to chain them together. It starts with the first one and runs through the, the list in order. If any of them fail, it stops running the policies. And then for the to-do controller, I just want the star for everything. I want it to validate you're logged in before you can get any data since it's all associated to a user. Pretty darn simple to implement policies. So next piece, custom functions. So up to this point, we've talked about the built-in REST verbs, how to overwrite them. Inevitably, you're going to need to write some kind of cu custom functions. In this case, the user identity, what I typically use it for is give me back information about the currently logged in user. It looks the same as everything else we've seen. It takes in two parameters, request and response. By default, sales will hook that up at the localhost 1337 slash my API, so in this case user, slash whatever the function name is called, so slash user identity. Not very REST-like, but we can simply change that in our routes file. We go and config slash routes, and we can list what do we want our routes to be. In this case, I want it to be a get. It's going to go slash user slash identity is going to be my URL, and it's going to call user controller dot user identity for the function. Can't get much easier than that for routes. Sales takes care of everything else of wiring that up and making that available. So some references. Documentation-wise, they have a ton of documentation at salesjs.com. You can get these slides online at slideshare.net slash digitaldrummerj. I have a full set of demo code on my GitHub that walks through some of the stuff that we saw, plus building out a full API, so it has user login, authentication, where you pass in an email, you pass in a password, it encrypts it, it associates all the to-do items, and makes sure you pull back only, user, only your user, since you shouldn't be able to see other people's stuff, and it pulls back only data in the to-dos that belongs to you. I also on my website have a full tutorial, it's about a half-day workshop, walking you step-by-step -step through actually creating a full API for the user and to-dos. You can follow me on my website at digitaldrummerj.me. I'm also on Twitter, YouTube, and Twitch at digitaldrummerj. I'll be around the rest of the conference, be in the hallway. If you have any questions, make sure to fill out your session evals with the events XD app. With that, thank you very much.